DXB. It's in the game. Hey guys, it's me, Ben, back with another one of my quick reviews, and this time I'm looking at Assassin's Creed Origins. It's been four years in development, it's been two years since Syndicate came out, that was the Assassin's Creed set in London that was much maligned, but that I greatly enjoyed, and yeah, that was the one that followed Unity. Unity, which was the technical mess that in many ways killed people's enthusiasm for the Assassin's Creed franchise in general. Much to my chagrin, I am a huge Assassin's Creed fan. I have played and beaten every single Assassin's Creed game released to date, except those 2D ones that were released on the consoles that weren't really Assassin's Creed games. I did, however, beat the one on the Vita. Um, but I have played all the ones from the main thrust, from the original one, all through the Desmond slash Ezio trilogy, Black Flag, you name it, I've played them, I've loved them. I love the settings, I love the variety in the settings, I love the meta story with its sci-fi nature that's wrapped uh, around these historical action adventure stealth assassination games. And the first thing you'll notice when you look at Assassin's Creed Origins is the setting being not ancient Egypt, but Egypt a long time ago, um, and then you've also got the fact that this game looks amazing. Now, the footage you're looking at right now is captured on uh, an original Xbox One or an Xbox One S. It is not captured on a One X. And frankly, you can already tell how gorgeous this game is. I know it looks even better on a PS4 Pro. But let me just say, I am super excited to get my hands on my One X, which will be very shortly, and look at this game in 4K with HDR, with all the big improvements in performance that that will bring. This game is going to be a technical powerhouse. I just know it. I can feel it in my bones. But I'm getting ahead of myself. I will definitely be coming back and looking at Assassin's Creed Origins on the Xbox One X shortly. So fear not, that's coming. But right now, the game already looks stunning. Sounds stunning. You can see the production value. You can see the fact that Ubisoft throws millions of man hours and thousands of staff members at this. So how they have their sort of decentralized development strategy across multiple development houses across the entire globe and the efforts that then get focused onto this Assassin's Creed game. When I said it's been four years in development, I mean, you know, since the early conceptualization stages, but, you know, the real ramping up of development would have happened after Syndicate was released about two years ago and after the DLC wrapped on that, and then all the teams would have come together and produced this unbelievable technical marvel of a video game. Now let's talk about the second most important thing that has been overhauled beyond just the visuals here. What we have is an incomplete redo of the way combat works in Assassin's Creed. Now, combat in Assassin's Creed up to this point has been very easy. It has been an experience of get in, throw the odd counters, kind of a bit like a Batman Arkham Knight or a Shadow of Mordor light. Uh, not that involved usually, not that engaging, usually just a lot of button mashing uh, when you weren't doing the assassinations. It didn't really incentivize you to use stealth even though you were assassin because the combat was so easy you could wade into an encounter and just lay waste to multiple enemies without really trying, especially once you started getting the later game power-ups. It was all a very, very easy affair. Now that doesn't make it bad, it made it incredibly accessible, but what we've got with Assassin's Creed Origins is combat that I feel maybe has been inspired by games such as The Witcher 3. It's more strategic, it's more timing-based, there's a heavy emphasis on counters and parries, and really considering your choices of enemies, attacks, when to engage, how to engage, and to engage with what. Now, beyond the fact that you have this brand new combat system, we also have a brand new gear system. Now, it's a proper RPG Assassin's Creed Origins, and by that I mean you've got color-coded gear based on rarity with different stats and bonuses and abilities given to it on, those, on that leveling system. So blue, purples, and gold. It's not quite as deep as perhaps a traditional RPG, which would have more like five or six tiers of rarity. This has got only three or four tiers, but it still means there's a lot more variety in the types of weapons you'll be picking up and the types of things that they can do. Now that coupled with a sort of deeper skill grid, which goes into three categories, warrior, hunter, and other, though I can't really remember what that was. That's the tool-based um, sort of mercantile section, um, and that's 
means you've got a lot more customization and ability to really play Assassin's Creed how you want to play it. Now this world is probably the biggest Assassin's Creed world we've ever seen. Vast swathes of beautifully rendered desert which look just unbelievable at night time. Oasis, places like the historical cities of Alexandria which are just these bustling uh, Egyptian metropolises full of life and culture and art and different races and the tensions that those brings. Uh, inside this world we have some of the best quest design I've ever seen in an Assassin's Creed game. So on top of this fantastic RPG systems and a much improved combat system, we have quests that are engaging and feel unique, that usually have maybe two or three parts to them that run together, and each one feels sort of like they have tailored gameplay mechanics that really add to those experiences. So you've got these main quests that feel great, side quests that have really nice self-contained narratives, again, harking back to my thoughts on The Witcher 3 with things like the Bloody Baron quest line, these sort of sort of families of quests that work so incredibly well together that add a real narrative punch and so spend time with characters that make you care about the abilities that you are unlocking through doing these fantastically fun and different and varied experiences. Assassin's Creed Origins is incredible because you have this open world which would, could suffer from the, the Ubisoft curse of filling it full of icons of places and things to go to that you don't really care about that spawn when you climb a tower and hit a sink point that has also been changed no longer does all the map reveal itself to you uh, when you just go up a sink point the sink points are mostly used are just fast travel locations so you do still need them but it doesn't reveal everything in that nearby location you still want to explore and exploration is so organic organically kind of um, incentivized through the discovery of things like tombs, hunting locations, different events, bandit camps, necropolises, you name it, there's so much stuff going on here, but it doesn't feel like a, a world just filled with cookie cutter bullshit, it feels like everything has been thought out and honed, and there is a, such a, a great level of craftsmanship to every facet of Assassin's Creed Origins, it truly is remarkable. So, we've talked about the weapons, we've talked about the levelling system, we've talked about the amazing sort of story structuring and, and character interactions. I mean, you play as Bayek, and at first, yeah, this game suffers from a pretty atrocious introduction segment. But once you get out of that and get to the wider world and really start to explore Egypt, you're let loose to do these things in any way in which you want. And it really, it just opens up. It's so gorgeous. You, It has that feeling of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Now obviously the Zelda Breath of the Wild has been in development for a really long time and didn't directly influence Assassin's Creed Origins but it's that kind of world that makes you want to poke into every crevice and every corner to, defi to find the lore, to explore the worlds, to find enough really interesting character to interact with. So, you know, what you get with an open world game such as this, as well as an RPG, is that their grinding can rear its ugly head, which forces you to spend perhaps a little bit longer leveling up your character to be good enough to maybe face certain main primary quests. But that would be much worse if the things you had didn't have to do uh, were boring. But they're not. They're great. There are loads of fun to do. And most of the side quests and the fetch quests and just, you know, the sort of filler quests. So, like I've said, exploration feels organic. So why not just spend that time doing those things? I should mention, though, because of the controversy that's propped up this year, microtransactions do feature in this game. You can basically buy your way out of pretty much everything uh, with real money in this. You can buy uh, different uh, outfits, which are just cosmetic, different mounts, which are just cosmetic. You might see me in some of the video galloping around on a unicorn. Uh, and that came as a microtransaction from some currency that was gifted to me as part of the edition of the game I got. So I decided to buy a unicorn because why not? There, like I said, there are outfits, there are time saver packs, which give you uh, selections of weapons. Uh, and then there are things like you can buy currency and uh, then the raw materials to like do crafting in this game. Crafting plays a pretty large part of this game, but they're easy to get. You know, you can either hijack the resources or you can just go out and hunt and get the resources that way and do a little bit of gathering to upgrade your gear to be higher level. Um, there are many systems at play here in Assassin's Creed Origins, more than we've ever seen in Assassin's Creed game before. It's really lent heavily into the RPG elements. Uh, of those sort of RPG open world games such as The Witcher 3, which I keep harkening back to, and in the best way possible, because I love that game, that is my pinnacle of an RPG exper experience on this generation of consoles, and I think that the fact that Assassin's Creed Origins has gone so far towards that style of game, while still keeping its amazing polish and giant uh, production values, means that this game is a stunningly beautiful and well accomplished experience. And I'm just, I've only got really good things to say about it, to be honest. And as we come to the end of my review here, 
I, you know, I mentioned a few maybe technical problems, as you always get from open world games like this. I can mention which are you know already seeing patches to improve them. You're going to get performance improvements on the Xbox One X version as well, obviously, if you're lucky enough to get one of those consoles. I just really enjoyed this. From you know, there's so much variety in those missions. I should mention that there are some amazing tombs you can explore. There's naval combat in here from like Black Flag, which you wouldn't necessarily expect in a game sitting in Egypt, full of deserts. But you know what? There's the Nile, and there's they're not that far from the sea. So yeah, there are missions that focus around naval combat, which feels just as good as it did in those previous games. You know, there's so much in here. This is AAA at its most AAA, and that means, of course, it's microtransaction supported. And maybe that means you knock a point off of it for that. But in my mind, it doesn't affect the gameplay. You don't need to buy anything with real money. Not at all. Not to enjoy this game. So because of all of that, because of my effusive praise, I can't give Assassin's Creed Origins less than five stars. B X B. It's in the game.